I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. What we're going to do today on that charging system is I got out of the shop manual. So I printed out the pages so that we can just, you know, go through the factory step-by-step -step diagnosis thing. And it says to disconnect the D and the F. So I don't know if you can see that well. These, I believe, you loosen the screw and you slide out the terminals. So the D, just so you know, stands for dynamo, which is the English word for generator. Hands dirty working on this old dog. <laughs> okay. So that should be the output wire for the generator, the big fat one. This other ones are not what we're looking for. We're looking for the wires that go to the generator. The reason it's a large one on the output is it's got to put volts back into the battery, current back into the battery, so it's got to carry load. And this is the F, that is the field. And as you can see, that has the original slotted. Uh, on it. So now it says connect the two leads to the positive terminal of the voltmeter. So we can do that right here. Just collect them together. And I think we ground the other lead. It shows it has a nice little picture with this cool looking old analog uh, voltmeter. So at the ground, put it on volts, and then it says, do not exceed approximate generator speed of 1,000 RPM. So we have to start up the car and watch the voltage. So look at the voltage. We have 20 volts. So that generator, if there's 24 volts, will put out a lot of volts, okay? So what does it say? If the generator builds up normal voltage, I don't know what that means. It seems like a lot to me. I don't know what normal voltage should be. What we're gonna do, so that seems high. Normal voltage to me would be around 13, maybe So what it says here though, okay, if it, it builds up normal voltage, check the control box, the wiring and the battery connection. If there is no voltage build up, remove the generator and examine the brushes and commutator. So that, that tells me that it's building voltage so that there shouldn't be a problem in that. I, I'm not sure about how much voltage. I know they will put out a lot of voltage the faster they go the more they'll generate. The regulator's job is to control that because we don't want to put too many volts into the battery because then it will get too hot and overcharge it. Plus, not so much on these this car, but on later modern cars, if the voltage gets too high, you're going to start damaging some electronic components. We don't want to do that. So let's see here. It asks you to check the brushes. We're going to get into that generator also. So um, what I want to do is go to the control box test in position, and that is on page M10. Okay, and it says right out of the gate to locate source of complete failure to charge. We don't have that problem. Uh, should the operation of the control box be unsatisfactory, here we go, it is recommended that the unit be renewed. <laughs> so we're going to keep going through here because it shows how to test this thing. I'm going to once again disconnect the battery real quick. I'm going to pull the cover off the regulator here. So there's two screws that hold the cover on. You definitely want the battery disconnected because this, this one has an original. It's a metal cover. The replacements a lot of times are plastic, but either way, you don't want to short anything.
Okay. There we go. Doesn't that look cool? Let's get the light in a little bit closer. Is that too bright? It's good. Okay. Light makes a difference. And it says with generator leads connected to the control box. So we got to put the leads back on. Little dudes. Started and slide the other ones underneath, hopefully. Hmm. I'm not worried about dropping them down and not too bad. Is that any bad for him? This one's not too bad because I'm sure I could find it. It's so clean. You get an old car that's filthy. And yes, you could lose those things. Um, I just like that dark sheet that I have here. That just drops off the sheet. <laughs> Sounds like a bunch of sheep. <laughs> you walked right into that, Steve. Sorry. So Steve, the cameraman, if you guys didn't hear that, says that he likes to lay a sheet underneath to catch anything should have dropped. That's, you can do whatever you want. If the car is warm, I wouldn't recommend that. Especially since that's the exhaust right below. Uh, the key is to be careful, I guess. So that's, this is the field lead. Okay, so we're all reconnected. I'll connect the battery again. So with it all connected, it says connect the voltmeter to the D terminal and the negative lead to Earth. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be checking the output of the generator. So that's the D terminal down there, and we're going to have our little voltmeter. I'm going to start the car. So we've got the car, we got 12.7, so it wants to charge. We give it some RPM, it goes up to, where did it go up to there? It went up pretty high, didn't it? So we're a little bouncing right around 14 volts. That's good. So it's gonna say, Oh, it's, it's telling you how to adjust the cut-in voltage. So the cut-in voltage, that's the, it's talking about the cutout right here. The cut-in voltage is when it starts to charge, okay? So should be checked after tightening, and uh, they don't have the, the voltages here. Where's the voltage? This is why I don't like using the manuals. I have to look everything up. Typically, as a professional, I have a quick trick on checking a generator. Uh, and if that's good, then I go to the regulator, change the regulator, and try that. Um, so I don't like messing around with these. And then there's a cutout relay. That's the high voltage end. So there's a way to adjust this. We're not going to touch any of that stuff. Um, so let's just take a look at what the field voltage is when it's charging. So you can see it's it's about half voltage and it drops because what it's doing is it's lowering the output on it. You get back down to an idle, it's gonna go up because in an idle, it's trying to maintain that higher voltage to charge the battery, okay? And then this is the battery terminal. So that's going back to the battery. So it says 13 point one five. Let's go back to the battery and see what the voltage is back there. So the wire I just checked comes off of that regulator and it goes down to the starter and bolts to the battery wire on the starter. So what, what do we have? So we, it's almost the same. So it's almost the same. It's just, you know, a few tenths off. 
So that's good. Now, if there was a big difference, let's say it was a full half a volt or even a full volt, then you've got a problem in a connection or uh, in, the, in, in a wire or a cable. So this battery cable goes from the trunk all the way up through the body around the, uh, around the frame and all that, and it goes right to the starter. Well, actually it goes to the solenoid originally. And then there's one that goes to the starter. So that, that connection right there at the solenoid or starter, a lot of these cars will loosen up. And part of the reason is the, the battery cable that goes to front to back is aluminum. And I'm sure we've all heard problems with aluminum wiring in houses. When you get aluminum and copper together, they heat and expand differently and at different rates. So over time, the heat and cooling will loosen them up. 